Last year when Mercedes-Benz introduced the EQS sedan, we all went, wow, that is the coolest thing but it's a sedan. Well, now it comes in an SUV. This is the Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV. I know that's a lot of letters, but what that adds up to is the coolest freaking car you've ever seen. Notice this flat front grille. It has these little Mercedes-Benz logos here embedded in the grille. There are cameras, there are sensors, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here that makes this car nearly drive itself. Not quite, you still have to be in charge. We've been driving around all week, have not used all those 300 miles, which is pretty awesome. SUV, I would call it a mid-size SUV. It has the option of a third row, so it has the higher ground clearance, makes it really comfortable for getting in and out. It has a nice roomy back seat, but you can add a third row. Now that's not a full-size third row because it's not a full-size SUV, but you can get two people in the third row if you need to. And then let me show you this. Plus 450 is the base model. Plus means it is all-wheel drive, dual motor, all-wheel drive. And it has this really cool little trunk popper right there. You just push in the badge and the cargo space is yours. So you can see how big this is. I wanna show you just how big this is. It is this big. <laughs> you look at me and how tall this is and how tall this carpet is. This is the size of the cargo floor in the Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV. So it's nice that they put a black carpet there because you know what? That This one is carpeted in white and uh, you have to really live a very clean lifestyle for it not to get dirty, but it's beautiful. So if you can live with that, that's a great thing to have. If you can't, they do have other colors, which is also a pretty cool thing. There are buttons on the side of the uh, cargo wall where you can push the buttons to put the lower, lower the center seats. I'll show you how that works. With Mercedes, you have to push the button and then take a breath because it does take a minute to work, but the seats do fold with the push of a button, which is pretty nice. Uh, hold on. Did you hear that on startup? Well, that's what it is. There's no rumbling engine because this is all electric. It gives you some ambient noise. Actually, the noise or this sort of sonic hum gets a little bit louder as you accelerate. It kind of feels like you're driving a video game and it is super cool. I will say I've been driving this all week and I really like it. So let me show you what we have here. And this is, keep in mind that this is the base model of the EQS SUV. So there's a driver information screen here here you can customize the different things that you see on the driver information screen that is not a touch screen what I want to get rid of that you can customize the things that you see on this screen I have my map here then here's my speedometer and then here's my power meter over here on this screen this is a 14 inch touch screen there is not a trackpad here for using the screen you can either touch it to use the screen to find the different things you want on this screen or you can do this. Hey Mercedes, how may I help you? Set the cabin temperature to 68 degrees. I'm setting the temperature to 68 degrees. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I love that. Finally, we have a voice assistant who has a very strong sense of courtesy, which is pretty nice. So I want you to notice something about this screen though. The default screen is not a menu, it is a map. And this is where, and there's also little charge stations here, so you can get information on charge stations that are nearby. If you need to get to a charge station, you can see where it is, you can get, um, information about it. Let me turn this fan down because that's really loud, which I was trying to 
Okay. You can, you can find the charge stations, you can get information about them, um, but this is the default screen. If you need other information, you can go to the home, uh, home screen, and then you can get apps, settings, and you can connect a smartphone right there on the uh, screen. This, by the way, is the screen that is standard on the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. It may look fancy, but it gets fancier if you opt for the hyper screen. The hyper screen is what we did see in the EQS sedan. It covers basically all of this dashboard that's wood is covered by Gorilla Glass hyper screen that has actually three screens. There's a driver screen, there's a multimedia screen, and then there's a passenger screen. We don't have that in this car, but if you're going to have somebody in the co-pilot seat who's gonna spend a lot of time there, it's probably worth getting the hyper screen. So then there's this little bar down here, and I wanna show you what this does. So here are our drive modes. And so normally you might think of a drive mode selector as putting as where you go to sport, and you can, uh, choose sport mode. You can also choose ind uh, your individual and set things however you'd like. Under this panel, there are a couple of nice features. There is a wireless charger, phone charger there. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay, so I can put my phone in there, it charges, I can get Apple CarPlay on the touch screen. I haven't connected it, but it did give me the option when I first got into the car. There is a little storage space here. There are a couple of USB-C ports. There are cup holders here, and you can actually uh, retract them. If you don't want the cup holders there, you can push them out of the way, and you could push them out if you want. They've got a little clip there to hold your cup tight. And if you don't want this thing, you can actually just take it out. So if you want to put something else in there, say you've got a really big uh, water bottle and it won't fit in here, you can take this out and just pop it, put it in the trunk, or you can leave it there. You just pop this little thing here and it stays pretty sturdy. There is a butterfly style armrest here, a pretty nice deep uh, well here, two USB ports there, and this really beautiful brown leather. Underneath this floating console, is yet another storage space. And I'll tell you what I really like about this. First of all, it's got these panels here on the side that keep things from rolling around. It also has this nice little strap. So if you wanted to put something here that you didn't want rolling around, like, um, I don't know, say a water bottle or maybe something, a, a something that might get broken. Um, you can just put it underneath the strap, papers or something. You can put it underneath that strap and it won't move around while you drive. I love what they did with this space. And you know what's interesting? It's even though it's plastic, it has stitching along the side. That's actual stitching along the side here. You can see the stitching here. That's actual stitching in this plastic panel. Pretty incredible. Another thing that Mercedes did that uh, is very novel and interesting, and I really like it's growing on me, is so many controls are now with the swipe of a finger. So you can use your finger to swipe the volume right here on the uh, steering wheel. You can also swipe the volume here on the this control panel. And you can, with a swipe of a finger, open the sunshades over the panoramic sunroof. One of the benefits of this being an electric car is that it has a ton of legroom. Electric cars tend to have more legroom because the battery pack is underneath the car and we need X number of feet, linear feet of space and a width and also a ground height to accommodate those batteries. What that means is naturally there's a lot more space for passengers. And so you get a lot of legroom back here. We actually drove for about an hour with three people in the back seat the other day and it was super comfortable. Even the passenger in the middle was really comfortable and everyone really enjoyed the ride. So I'll show you what else you get back here. So there is a armrest with a, just a little, I don't really know what this is. I guess you could put a phone or something in here, but it's not a cup holder. Here are passenger vents. There's also vents in the pillar here between the door and the, uh, the front seat. And passengers can set their temperature. They can set their fan speed and they can also plug in their devices with these two USB ports down here. I believe the top trim has a household outlet in here as well. 
Second row passengers can also configure their seats. They can push the seat forward, they can recline or push the seat back forward a little bit, and they can move the headrest a little bit. These are the same seat controls that we have in the front seat. And then with the added uh, Alcantara suede pillow, you could take a nice nap. In this car, you probably want to select E mode, and that's where you're going to get the most range on your battery charge. Now, this one is projected to get about 300 miles to a charge, but you can actually extend that and get a few more miles on a charge by putting it in E mode and using one pedal driving. And the way you're going to do that is by pulling this left paddle. So you're in E mode. Once you put it in drive and you pull the paddle, you get the strongest recuperation, which is what Mercedes calls regenerative braking, you'll get the strongest recuperation. You'll see a little minus sign down here next to the drive. It'll say D minus E. That's where your strongest uh, recuperative setting is. And that's where you almost never have to touch the brake while you're driving this car, which is pretty awesome. Also on this little panel here, here is a surround view camera. There are our uh, settings, our vehicle settings, so you can get to those quickly. Emergency flashers, music on or off, and this actually is a touch sensitive slide, so I can turn the music off by tapping this or I can slide the volume. There is a fingerprint sensor, and I can use this to set up a profile for me or another driver, and then all I have to do is tap that little uh, fingerprint reader and all my settings will immediately be put into place. So my music, my climate, uh, ambient lighting. Um, if I have a fragrance diffuser, it can in invoke that. If there's a seat massage, however I want the car set up for the minute I get into it, I can set it up, set my, uh, put my, uh, my identity with my fingerprint, touch it, and away I go, and that's pretty awesome. This car does not have a fragrance diffuser, which would live in here if we did, but you can get a fragrance diffuser. That's just the regular glove box. I think it needs a fragrance diffuser. That is an option. Um, if you have a fragrance diffuser, however, you can coordinate it with the comfort setting. So you can set one of these massage types and you can also set your ambient light. So I can change my ambient light to whatever I want. Let's see, let's change it to yellow and you'll see it pops up yellow here. I kind of like that blue, that deep blue purple color. That's what I've been driving around with all week and I've really enjoyed that. And then you can also, uh, and, and these are, are designed to create a mood in the Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV to give you the feeling that you would like to have for your drive. And that paired with the sound of the electric car, the absolute glide that this car has on the road, and then these cushy seats with the pillow on the headrest, it's like driving a dream, it, like truly in a dream. It's the most incredible experience.